Alright guys, let's talk about everyone's favorite yellow vegetable, corn. Squash is a contender, but let's talk about corn. It's actually a type of grass, but uh, for this explainer, we'll call it a vegetable. So, our corn is officially producing its um, reproductive parts, let's call it. So corn is actually a hermaphrodite, so it contains the male and the female parts. It's also uh, what we would call a wind pollinating plant. But more about that in just a second. So this part up here is called the tassel. This is where the pollen is contained. This is actually uh, the male part of the corn. If you look down here, this is called the silks, which is the female part. This is actually where your corn cobs are produced. Okay, you see this right here? This right here will actually become a corn cob right here. Okay, so the correct way to grow corn is actually not the way that I've done it. The correct way to do it would be to do a four foot by four foot square and put rows in there. But obviously with my current situation, I don't have that kind of spacing for where I put them. So what I will actually have to do is hand pollinate every single one of these, uh, these silks. It's not quite time yet. Um, the tassels up here are not quite producing pollen yet. You can see it's still, still green. The pollen actually is on the inside. These are not, qu these are not quite ready. Um, but whenever it's time, I will have to actually break these off and hand pollinate every single one of the silks. Okay, so I said earlier that corn is a wind pollinator, which is the reason why you want to do a four foot by four foot square so that when the wind blows, it knocks the pollen off the top and makes it fall down onto the, uh, in, to the silks. What's interesting about corn is that um, it actually needs pretty consistent pollinating to actually produce the full ears of corn like we know. If it doesn't get consistent pollination on those silks, it will actually only produce partial cobs, which nobody wants partial cobs, everybody wants full cobs. One of the things about corn is that it's actually extremely um, soil resilient, meaning it can grow in all kinds of soil, whether it's rocky or, um, you know, loose, compacted, clay-like, anything like that. It, it will actually grow in just about every single type of soil. The, the kicker about the, the plant itself is that it's actually um, a very shallow root system that gets developed. So if you have an area that you live in where there's actually a lot of wind per se, you might have to actually build like a trellis system. That way you can um, support it during the high wind seasons. There are all types of different corns. Um, this one here is actually a sweet corn. It's the kind that you would eat on the cob. Um, there's different popping corns, um, there's the kinds that you grind up into flour that they're not really good for eating. Um, they're too tough and they're not sweet at all. They really don't taste very good, so you have to grind those up um, and, and create flours and cakes and cornmeal and things like that. Again, this is a, uh, a sweet corn variety, so this is the type that we'll eat right on the cob. And you can see we've actually got quite a few of the silks that are already producing this corn is i would say probably about three months old at this point um, if i actually stand up here with the corn down you can see it's actually about as tall as i am i'm 511 so it's about six feet tall after three months we will um continue to take the uh pollen and pollinate all of the silks for probably the next I don't know month or so whenever it uh, gets ready it'll take about a month
maybe a month and a half of pollination. I'll have to do it every single day because of the way that I've done it. It's not the way I would advise. Definitely do four by four uh, square with several rows and you'll have much better success. Otherwise, you can hand pollinate and like I said, it's pretty resilient. So give it a shot.